Hello everybody, today we're going to be learning how to install Russian malware on your Facebook. Um, we are also going to be learning how to do the Blender application. Um, okay, now seriously, we're going to learn how to do cell shading. I'm going to show you how I did the image texture or, or uh, image sequence on there. And we're going to learn about color correction in After Effects. Um, I've been told After Effects is not the place to do color correction. However, it worked fine for me, so I'll show you what my method was. Okay, let's make this rather quick. So, let's go to our Hypershade. Uh, if you haven't used Blender, I uh, highly recommend learning it. It's the best free alternative to any 3D application. I actually prefer it over... Uh, Cinema 4D right now. Um, I'm gonna piss people people off by saying that, but whatever. Okay, so cell shading, Blender, pretty simple actually. So what you're gonna start with is actually not this. So you start with a uh, principal BSDF. This is your basic. Uh, shading in Blender that it always starts out with. Go ahead and drop that. Um, add in a diffuse BSDF, a shader to RGB, and a color ramp. That'll get you your um, just your solid colors. Uh, then to pick your colors, I recommend you know choosing a color that you like. Um, you can mix and match if you like. This color worked well for me. Just this kind of orangish color. Um, so then I always start with the brightest. And you always want to make sure your lightness is all the way up. Uh, then you move to your second one. And this should be about one third apart. I mean, you want to play with these, but because it'll be different for everything. Uh, but then I just drop this about one third again. Um, rule of thirds but with color what the hell there we go good god okay and this one's another third drop third uh, darker uh, diffuse no roughness uh, you don't really need any color on there it doesn't really make a difference uh, because we're shader we're changing the shader to an RGB channel anyway uh, which pretty much gets rid of the color uh, okay let's look at another one so now we're looking at this uh, this is the uh, material for the image sequence. Um, this will start as a principal BDF, BSDF again. Um, so you just drop, delete the principal B, BSDF, go um, add, and that's just Shift A that I just pressed. And then you go to um, emission, drop that in there. You have your PNG sequence, uh, which is going to be under, this is shift A to get this menu again. Um, it's going to be under texture, image texture, add that in. I'll show you that what that looks like. Um, doesn't look, it doesn't have anything in it right now. Then you just open, open up your image texture. You just open up your first one. Um, yeah, then you change, there'll be another little drop down sequence and this is where you change it to image sequence. Um, movie does not work. At least I haven't gotten it to work. Um, then your number of frames. This is, fr this is number as important. Um, you should know how many frames are Im in your image sequence or how at least how many you would want to render. Um, this is how many it will cycle through. And this, if this number is larger than the number of frames you actually have, uh, it will render as a pink texture or basically a null meaning it's not pointing to there's no like 50 if I had this at 56 there'd be no 56th image so every 56th frame there would be a pink texture on there um, okay start frame this is just saying what frame we want to start on and we want to first uh, PNG start on um, you don't need this 001. This is just because I have multiple 1000.png's in this scene, um, but not in the same folder. Like 
in this folder, this is the only thousand. Uh, it's just in these other um, renders, I have multiple of these, so it has to differentiate between those, and it does that automatically. Um, so this is my first first frame, and so if I wanted to start on the second frame, you know, start frame one. Uh, offset. The reason if it's off, it's offset uh, 999 right now is because I have my um, animation starting at 1000. Uh, that's is because it's just good practice to start a little bit further ahead so you have some room to go negative if you need to. Uh, again, you you can't really go below zero. It's just part of the animation software. It doesn't let you go below zero. It just can't render negative frames. Um, what else? Let's go back to our hypershade. Make sure cyclic is enabled. Um, auto refresh is not necessarily something that I use. I when I did it, it rendered as a single frame. So I guess play with that. It might work for you or might not. Um, what you're also going to need is your UV map, and this is uh, referring to the screen. So that is, let's see. If I can click on this. There we go. Okay, so uh, to make a UV map, you just, of this single polygon, just basically unwrap it and it should if it's a single polygon it should unwrap just perfectly square if not you can kind of just adjust it to fit all four corners and um, then you need your UV map because you're gonna plug your UV map into your texture and your texture will flow up that um, this is referring to what UV map uh, because you can have multiple I don't want to get too technical here but these are your UV maps so if I change this to screen that obviously it disappeared. You just change this to screen and it's back. Um, so yes, that's pretty much that. Now let's go into color correction. Just discard these changes. Okay, so for color correction, just uh, I edited my video. Um, this is after I made it into a loop zoom out here sorry for that um, this I also had this remove grain on but it, I didn't really do use it um, okay so we'll show you I'll show you how it looks without the color correction obviously it's a little dull um, pretty dark uh, so to lighten it up a little bit I brought in the levels um, what that looks like is let's see there we go um, right here so originally this was like here and this was about there so I just brought those in and kind of condensed those to where the spikes um, and the color began uh, this just helps kind of really exaggerate the scene uh, to do this to add this effect you just go to effect color correction levels uh, the other one I'm going to add is brightness and contrast and the last one I'm going to add is hue and saturation okay hue and saturation what did I do I increased it by 25 so let's see what that looks like so here's zero and this is probably the biggest change that you'll see 25 it's obviously a lot uh, brighter and just more appealing in my opinion um, then we also have the brightness of contrast which really makes it pop uh, brightness I moved up 26 and 30 so obviously increases brightness just like in Photoshop and contrast of course if I really wanted a crazy looking scene maybe I'd do a, like crazy like that but uh, I thought 30 worked pretty well all right uh, hope this guy hope this helps you guys and have a good one